girls, have you ever trained for something or practiced really hard for something? If you can't think of anything, let me give you a few examples. How many Boy Scouts do I have out there? Or Girl Scouts or Adventure Guides do I have out there? I know I have quite a few. Now, we talked about commitment me being make a plan and following through with it. So I know you guys have badges that you have to earn and awards and patches and pins. So in order to accomplish those goals, you have to have, you have to come up with a plan. You have to put the plan into action in order to get those, right? Same with sports. You have to practice, practice before you have a game. And hopefully that all that practice pays off before you have a game. Same thing for school. You can make a commitment to school. How many of you have had to memorize your addition facts or your subtraction facts or your multiplication facts? All of that takes a commitment. You have to have a plan and you actually have to follow through on that plan in order to be successful with any of those things. Well, the Apostle Paul used an analogy when he wrote a letter to the church of Corinth and he talked about running a race. Now let me read that verse to you and then we'll talk a little bit about running a race. This comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives a prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Now there's different kinds of races. If you're gonna race your friend around the block, or down to the corner of the street, you don't necessarily need to train for that, right? You still wanna win, but you don't really have to commit to that. Now, sports and the long-term things, if you wanna run a really long race, you have to actually put in some time. So there's four things you have to do if you wanna win the race or be really good at it. You have to make a plan, you have to move, you actually have to do something. You need fuel, meaning you're gonna need some water and some healthy things to eat that are going to make you strong. And you actually need rest. You can't push your body so hard every day because your body can't keep up with that. You actually do need a little bit of rest. So all of that has to do with training. Now Paul says in the next verse, chapter 25, he talks about the training that has to do with the race. He says, everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control. In all things they do, they do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we are Im imperishable. Now, perishable means something that can die or something that can go bad. Like here it says a wreath. And a lot of times when you guys win in sports, you guys get a medal or a trophy, but those things aren't perishable. Those things actually last. So have you ever thought about that your life is actually a race? Paul wasn't talking about running a race. He wasn't talking about the Olympics. He wasn't talking about being the fastest person on your soccer team. He was talking about this life is actually a race. Everything you do and every step you make, you're actually heading towards the finish line. And do you know what that finish line is, boys and girls? It's being with Jesus forever. Jesus is that finish line. That is what we are supposed to be looking at every day that we run this race called life. So if Jesus is our finish line, we have to know what's important for, to Jesus in order to know what we're supposed to be doing in this race, right? So let's look at what Jesus says is the most important. This comes from Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. And this is Jesus talking. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So God wants us to love him and love other people. Okay, so how do we do that? Just like you would train for an actual foot race, we can do the same thing when we love God and love other people. We have to practice, we have to commit, and we have to train. So what does that look like? How do we train 
for this race called life. If Jesus is our prize and if Jesus is our goal, what do we need to do? Well, we need to read our Bible. We need to pray. We need to tell others about Jesus. And we need to make sure that we wake up each day living for Jesus. Everything we do is a practice in how we love God and we love others. So that when we get to the end of our life, we will get a crown, boys and girls. One that's not going to disintegrate. That's not going to break apart. So we need to remember that we need to practice what matters most. So let's ask Jesus to help our race, to run our race well this week. Dear Jesus... Thank you for giving us this race called life. God, Father, thank you for giving us each day. Please help us to make wise choices, Father. Please help us to love you and love others every day that we have our race. Thank you for our health. Thank you for each and every day that you give us. Father, please help us to continue to remember to practice what is important, and that is loving you and loving others. In Jesus' name. Amen.